Hello classmates. Group 6 will discuss the knee theory by Virginia Henderson. The group 6 members are Dessa Articulo, Mara Chris Bedalones, Alvi Jane Gensales, Christine Bagagoista, who is Virginia Henderson. And what is the knee theory? Hello, my name is Alvi and I'm going to present the historical background of Virginia Henderson. So she was called as the Nightingale of Modern Nursing. The modern day mother of nursing as well as the 20th century Florence Nightingale. She received numerous recognitions, including the first Christian Raymond Prize as well as the honorary doctoral degrees. She was born on November 30, 1897 in Kansas, Missouri. Graduated from the Army School of Nursing in 1921 and she worked for two years at Henry Street a Visiting Nurse Service. She earned her bachelor's degree in 1932, and in 1934, she earned her master's degree in nursing. She died on March 19, 1996. However, she is well known for her need theory, in which it emphasized on the importance of increasing the patient's independence and the basic human needs as the central focus of nursing practice, which leads to further development of theory regarding the needs of patient and how the nursing can assist in meeting those needs. Henderson also um, identified three roles of nursing, which includes the uh, substitutive, which is doing for the person, supplementary is helping the person, Complementary is working with the person. The unique function of the nurse is to assess, I mean to assist individual sick or well in the performance of those activities contributing to health or its recovery that he would perform unaided if he had the necessary strength, will, or knowledge, and to do this in such a way as to help him gain independence as rapidly as possible. She also uh, categorized the 14 nursing activities, which is based on basic human needs that includes to breathe normally, to eat and drink adequately, eliminate body waste, move and maintain desirable postures, sleep and rest, select suitable clothing, maintain body temperature within normal range by adjusting the clothing and modifying the environment, Keep the body clean and well-groomed. Avoid dangers in the environment and enduring others. Communicate with others in expressing emotions, needs, fears, or opinions. Worship according to one's faith. Work in such a way that there is a sense of accomplishments. Play or participate in various forms of recreation. Learn, discover, and satisfy the curiosity that leads, that leads to normal development and health and use the available health facilities. This is Mary Chris to discuss major concepts of Virginia Henderson's theory. Henderson dedicated an individual care as she advocated nursing rule as assisting individuals with necessary actions to maintain health, to recover, or to achieve peaceful death. Henderson also emphasized that environment is important to a person's perception of health and well-being but can also affect a person's physical as well as mental well-being. She identified a person's environment as external elements and mentioned biological, physical, and behavioral as the three areas of environment that are important to mold and shape an individual's life. Health was not a component of Henderson concept that was clearly defined, but she did imply that health was in relation to one's independence. Basically, the 14 components of basic needs related to the person's health as health relates to independence with activities of daily living. Virginia Henderson defined nursing as the unique function of the nurse is to assist the individual sick or well in the performance of those activities contributing to health or its recovery or peaceful death. Then a nurse would perform an aid and if he or she had the necessary strength, will knowledge and to do this in such a way as to help him gain independence as rapidly as possible. 
announcing in United Kingdom about Virginia Henderson's need-based theory and implications written by Masters in 2015 suggested that nurses are viewed as a helper, assistant, and companion to a patient's health, role, and well-being. The relationship aspect is that when a patient is sick, the nurse helps the patient to get better and recover. While the patient is in rehabilitation, the nurse assists the patients in achieving independence, and lastly, the nurse is a companion during planning of care, goal-setting, and preventing maintenance initiatives. So reporting on the need theory assumptions. Henderson's theory has remained popular in the nursing practice because it's simple and easily understood. She conceptualized the clients as a compilation of basic needs, which then helps the nurses clearly define their roles. The assumptions of Virginia Henderson's need theory are the first assumption, nurses care for their patients until they can provide or until they can care for themselves once again. She described the nurse's role as sub substitutive, supplementary, and complementary with the goal of helping the person become as independent as possible. That is, assisting the individual, sick or well, in the performance of activities to maintain health, to recover, or to achieve peaceful death. The second assumption, patients desire to return to health. For many clients, especially the ones admitted in the hospital, their very goal is to be able to do what they used to do before and return home to a familiar environment where they can enjoy the road to recovery. Henderson emphasized the importance of helping the patient gain more independence so that recovery after hospitalization would not be delayed. She focused on individual care with the nurse assisting individuals with essential activities that contribute to health and recovery. Third assumption, nurses are willing to serve and that nurses will devote themselves to the patient day and night. Nurses are the backbone of patient care. Although they may not officially diagnose, prescribe treatment, make a prognosis, they do have independent judgment. It is by their creativity and individualized care planning that patients receive the best possible care they can have and gain back their independence as much as possible. Lastly, in addition to the assumptions, Henderson also believed that the mind and body are inseparable and are interrelated. She believed that the body is the sum of all its parts and the good and that good health is affected by so many different factors such as age, cultural, ba cultural background, emotional balance, and others. She believes in holistic approach to nursing that cover the physiological, psychological, spiritual, and social components. Hi, my name is Tessa. I'm going to discuss how the new theory relates to 21st century nursing practice. The new theory is a broad theory which is generalizable to all fields of nursing practice, from medical surgical nursing to geriatric nursing. Virginia Henderson's theory was developed to help the patient transition from a state of dependence to development of autonomy, which is a vital aspect of a person's life in contemporary Canada. The group has discerned that this theory will help the elderly population to prepare themselves to depart from the hospital setting to independent living. This theory is essential for the nurses to carefully assess for the readiness of the seniors to go home and take care of themselves based on the 14 vital components. Group 6 presents Virginia Henderson's need theory. We will present our case. Mrs. A. is a 74-year-old widow. She is living alone in her apartment in Hamilton. Her only daughter who is pregnant with her third child is living and working in Scarborough with her husband and children. I miss your cooking, Mom. I'm sorry I can only visit and help you once a month. It is okay, my darling. I have been doing very well despite my condition and I have been doing it for how many years now? Mrs. A was diagnosed with congestive heart failure five years ago and feels that she is getting weaker as the years pass. She is independent and used to doing her chores at home and prefers to do her personal activities herself. Mrs. A is an active member of the Roman Catholic Church. She used to do a lot of volunteer work and joined the pilgrimage as a tour guide many years ago. I know mom. You are stubborn. But I can see you are getting tired very easily. I am worried. Yes, I know. I feel tired and short of breath when I exert too much effort. But, I am taking it slowly. I will be okay. Mrs. A is exhausted. 
She needs to do her laundry more often than she used to because she cannot hold her urine during the night. She accidentally wets her pants and sheets most nights. I am very tired. I hope I do not get wet myself again tonight. Once a month, Mina visits her mother, and she helps her with grocery shopping, laundry, and cooking. Mina is aware that her mother requires more support than she asks. I notice that mother looks tired every time that I visit. She sleeps mostly during the day, and she seems to be more forgetful than usual. I am worried I do not know what to do, who will look after her when I give birth to my child. During the night, Mrs. A's slow and unsteady gait makes it hard for her to reach the bathroom in time. Oh no. I need to get up quick. I need to pee. Oh no, oh my, no, ouch. In her rush to get to the bathroom in time, Mrs. A had a fall. Mina received a call from the hospital. Mrs. A had a fall and sustained a large bruise on her left arm and a two-inch laceration on her forehead. Good afternoon Mrs. A, and Mina. I am Dr. Matthews, I am going to talk about your health condition. Are you okay with your daughter present? Hello Dr. Matthews, yes, it is fine. Hi Dr. Matthews. How is my mother's health? I have not seen her for about three weeks and she does not tell me that she was not feeling well lately. Mrs. A has developed a cough and sore throat. I am thankful that her cough did not progress to pneumonia. However, the worsening of the swelling of her legs indicates that her heart is not doing much better. Her chest x-ray shows that she has fluid in her lungs because her heart cannot pump properly so the fluid accumulates. Also, the extreme swelling in her legs and feet, caused her to develop sores. She had a laceration on her forehead, and a couple of bruises. She will need someone to look after her more often than once a month after discharge. You may consider a respite care or home care services. The client care coordinator will be able to provide options for you to consider. I will leave you to talk about it. Mom, what do you think about going to a respite care? I know you want to stay at home but you need more help. I do not want to go. But, I guess I do not have a choice. Mrs. A is not happy about moving to a respite care, and she started to show signs of depression. The health care team collaborates with Mrs. A and her daughter to create a plan of care that will suit Mrs. A's needs. Group 6 will use Virginia Henderson's need theory to plan Mrs. A's care. Utilizing the need theory, the 14 components helped us to organize a nursing care plan for Mrs. A. For breathing normally, our goal is for Mrs. A to tolerate physical activity without difficulty and maintain adequate oxygenation. This can be done through breathing exercises, positioning, pacing activities, and rest period. Second is eat and drink adequately. Our goal for her is to consume 75% of meals and eat without pain. This is done by providing food choices, sips of fluids, soft diet, and pain medications. Third is elimination of body waste. Our goal is for Mrs. A to increase continence and stay dry throughout the day and night. Our intervention is to advise Mrs. A to avoid caffeinated beverages, especially in the afternoon. Limit fluid before bedtime and suggest to use a bedside remote. Fourth is movement and posturing. Our goal is for Mrs. A to learn proper transferring techniques, use of assistive device and referral to an occupational therapist. Our intervention includes advice to use proper footwear, demonstration of body mechanics, and transferring techniques. For sleep and rest, Mrs. A was assessed of interrupted sleep because of frequent urge to urinate at nighttime and having pain from injuries of her fall. The main goal is for her to have 7-8 to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep at night and feel no pain. Interventions include limit the fluid intake before going to bed, skip afternoon naps, and pain medication before bed is prescribed. After implementing the interventions, Mrs. A was able to sleep well at night as evidenced by increased strength and alertness during the day and verbalized that she has no pain. In selecting suitable clothes, Mrs. A has few clean clothes to wear as she often sweats her pants due to urinary incontinence. It was also assessed that Mrs. A has difficulty putting her clothes on due to shortness of breath. The goal is for Mrs. A to put clean and proper clothes without difficulty. Interventions are helping Mrs. A in choosing comfortable and easy-to-wear clothes and allowing her to take time to dress up. Evaluation. Mrs. A was able to choose, put clothes, and tolerate it well without shortness of breath.
The next component, maintain body temperature. Assessment for Mrs. A includes elevated temperature of 37.6 degrees Celsius due to inflammation and pain. The goals are to maintain body temperature within normal range and for Mrs. A to understand the importance of keeping normal body temperature. Interventions include proper hand hygiene to prevent infection and use and select proper cloning. With the interventions done, Mrs. A has normal and able to maintain normal body temperature and free from signs of infection and dresses accordingly. Keep the body cleaned and well-groomed. Assessment. Mrs. A dresses properly, however, because of urinary incontinence. Her pants smells urine as she also has difficulty doing personal care and doing her own laundry. The goals for this component is for Mrs. A to put her own clean clothes and do own personal care and to coordinate with social worker to arrange assistance for Mrs. A's daily activities. Interventions include preparing the bathroom for Mrs. A and encouraging Mrs. A to do as much as she can during bath. Also, arranging a home visit with the client care coordinator to address necessary assistance such as laundry. With interventions met, Mrs. A showed independence during bath and dresses herself using clean clothes with minimal assistance. Avoid dangers in the environment. Mrs. A was assessed to be living alone in her apartment building with unsteady gait and having shortness of breath when doing chores. The goals are to have someone to look after her, able to do activities without difficulty, and have a fall-free environment at home. Intervention. Enhance safety features such as grab bars and anti-sleep mats and teach Mrs. A to use a dishwasher. It's also suggested to have someone to look after her, such as a personal support worker or another family member. Evaluation, Mrs. A did not have any incidents of fall for more than six months, neither injury related to skin breakdown for more than six months, and also was able to use a dishwasher. She lives alone, have someone to talk to, encouraged to participate in an online forum with the help of online technology, use of communication application to talk to her daughter, assist in the use of social media to look for updates of her daughter. Mrs. A was able to build a network of people with congestive heart failure and has shared her stories to experience, of experiences and thoughts in managing her condition. Mrs. A was able to use Facebook to check for her daughter's update. Mrs. A was able to keep in touch to her daughter daily with the help of messenger applications. Worship according to one's faith. She is a devoted Catholic Christian. She easily gets tired when walking. To be able to create a spiritual environment conducive to Mrs. A's situation, health situation rather, conduct a dialogue with Mrs. A on how she wants to address her problem. Mrs. A was able to accept that she cannot go to Mass every Sundays, but rather realize that going to the Catholic Church is the sole representation of being devout, devoted to her religion. Work accomplishment. She feels tired and short of breath when doing chores. She will be able to perform her activities of daily living while, while not spending too much energy. Pace activities. Provide rest periods. Suggest the need to use a dishwasher. Um, suggest the need to use a stair lift. Mrs. A was able to wash dishes and do laundry. Mrs. A felt more fulfilled as compared when she cannot complete her household chores. Play or participate in various forms of recreation. She is alone. She will be able to build relationships, relationships with other people who share the same illness. Encouraged to join self-help group. Suggest the use of social media, internet, in reading forum posts and sharing her thoughts related to congestive heart failure. Mrs. A was able to participate in self-help group. Mrs. A have found a circle of friends whom she communicate with. Mrs. A was able to express her thoughts about her disease to others. Learn, discover, or satisfy the curiosity. Depressed, Mrs. A will be able to get information that will make her be critically conscious on what to do in able to cope. Encouraged to join self-help group. Encouraged sharing stories in online forums related to congestive heart failure. Listen to experiences of people who have congestive heart failure. Mrs. A was able to cope in, in her challenging situation. For our conclusion, Mrs. A's scenario shows the utilization of Virginia Henderson's knee theory into clinical practice by applying an expanded form of the nursing process. This theory can serve as a guide to effectively assess caring needs, render holistic care, and proper evaluation of care. 
providing assistance to promoting autonomy. Therefore, this jury enhances the quality of care being provided to the patients and benefiting the nurse by developing their competencies. This jury will continue to develop as the needs of the patients change from generation to generation.